Notion creators failed you, and that's because their complicated productivity system templates aren't designed to make you more productive, they're designed to be so complex you feel like you have to buy them. And next thing you know, you're spending more time managing your productivity system than actually being productive. And I know this firsthand, I've tried countless Notion templates, as well as other note-taking apps like Evernote and Obsidian for knowledge-based management, and for task management, I've tried Trello, Asana, Things3, Timestripe, Todoist, but for years, I couldn't stick to any of my systems systems and I always ended up reverting back to an extremely messy Apple Notes. But that was until I developed my own system. And by the end of this video, you'll understand the five-step framework you'll need to build your own system that works for you. And it will work for you because you will build it yourself for your needs, but with the help of the framework that has worked for me. So step one of this framework is to choose your knowledge-based system. And we'll touch on this later, but for me, this is an entirely different category to your task or project management system. Your knowledge-based system is where you will store notes, online resources, documents, and anything random that you might wanna keep track of long-term. For me, that's things like quotes, AI prompts, new vocabulary words, but keeping track of your knowledge is essential in the age of information and information overload. You need a place to store information so you can free your mind to learn new things, but also not lose out on previously acquired knowledge. So between Notion, Obsidian, and Evernote, Notion has always been my favorite. That being said, you should choose the software that works best for you. Tiago Forte, who we'll circle back to later, says there are three main note-taking archetypes. There are gardeners who want to note-take in a spontaneous, explorative, and creative way, but not necessarily with a massive amount of structure. They want to make their own connections between information and knowledge and let those connections be some of the main ways they organize their ideas. If you feel like you may be the gardener archetype, you may want to check out Obsidian, Rome Research, or LogSec. Then there are librarians who want to capture all their acquired knowledge, but they want to retrieve this info on demand when it relates to a shorter term project they are working on or concurrent learning obsession that they have. Librarians love to collect information and categorize it so they can revisit later when the time comes. For note taking, librarians tend to enjoy using Evernote or OneNote, so check those out if you feel like you may be a librarian archetype. And finally, there are architects like myself who are systems thinkers who want to be very structured in the way they organize knowledge. For architects, disorganization may bother them, and so they need a system that can abide to their very custom needs. Notion, in my opinion, is the knowledge base for architects. But there are also people who don't fall into any single category, and those people might prefer the simplicity of managing things in Apple Notes, their computer's files, or Google Docs and Google Drive, and that's perfectly okay too. But if you feel like you're more of an architect or you wanna use Notion, the first realization I had to make is that no matter what Notion creators were trying to tell me, Notion is not for task management, especially not at the micro level. Every single time I try to manage my tasks in Notion, I ended up not using it after a certain amount of time. But instead of blaming myself for not being organized enough, I accepted that it may just be Notion's fault because my favorite knowledge-based tool doesn't have to be my favorite task management tool. So step two of this framework is to pick your favorite project or task management tool. And when it comes to methodologies for project management, there are many frameworks out there. For example, there's Waterfall, Critical path methods, scrum, but my favorite is Kanban boards. Since this video is about Notion, I don't want to go too deep into project management frameworks, but my main takeaway from all this is that if you've failed to manage projects or tasks in Notion in the past, just use another tool for it. Instead, for task management, you can try Asana, Rike, ClickUp, Linear, TickTick, tick, Things3, Todoist, or many others. But my favorite, and a lot of people might give me stick for this, has always been Trello. As a fan of Kanban boards, for me, it's just the simplest and most responsive, which is what I seek for my project management tool given the complexity of my Notion knowledge base system. Okay, so now you've done your research and testing and you've chosen your knowledge base tool and you've also chosen your task management tool. The next step of this framework is to develop your digital brain system where you'll be keeping track of everything happening in your digital life, your notes, your projects, your tasks, and you'll organize them systematically so that you don't lose track of anything. And when it came to my digital brain system, my big breakthrough happened after reading The Para Method by Tiago Forte where he recommends organizing your life into four main buckets. The first being projects, which are short-term things that you are working on and have a definite end date. This could be a product launch, big upcoming trip, or a test you're studying for. After projects, there's areas, which are the wider categories of your life that won't foreseeably change over time, 
and don't have a definite end date. For areas, you could categorize these broadly, for example, health, finances, and relationships, or you could be more granular and have areas like exercise, diet, software development, sales, philosophy, and family. The third category are resources, and these are topics or information that may be useful to you in the future, and they usually relate to a current project or area. A resource could be an article you read, took notes on, or the framework from this video that you want to store in your productivity area. And finally, there's your archive, where you can safely store away any redundant projects, areas, or resources to avoid brain clutter, and also not lose out on any precious knowledge from the past. So that's the para method in a nutshell, but para in its purest form didn't actually work for me, but my own version of para did work for me. And that's why step three of this framework is to create your own system. But I highly recommend studying other people's systems so you understand how you can best build yours. And that leads us to step four, which is to learn Notion before you build your system from step three. But if you're not using Notion, you can either skip this step or replace it with a tool of your choice if it has a learning curve. When it comes to Notion, it does have a learning curve and most people still don't understand how it's meant to be used. And this is where I get the most value from Notion creators since there are some phenomenal teachers out there who teach the tool. But if there's one main takeaway I have for you, it's that you need to use the databases function of Notion to use Notion correctly. And when you use Notion databases, you can also create buttons, automations, and templates to make it easier and quicker to use your system. And step five of this framework is to build the system yourself. Don't waste your money on a fancy Notion template. I can't stress this enough. One, because if you do, you probably won't know how the system works, so you won't adjust it over time, which is key. Two, because the new system will be so overwhelming, you'll probably give up before you even start. And three, because someone else's system is highly unlikely to be the perfect one for you. Plus, you won't value it as much as one that you created yourself. And so, as you build your second brain on Notion, you must double down on what you actually stick to and quickly scrap what you don't. That way you keep it lean and you actually use everything in your system because the last thing you want is parts of it that you don't use that end up cluttering your brain. And so to give you some inspiration on how to organize your second brain system, I wanted to show you my notion, which takes inspiration from a lot of different places, but is loosely based on the pair method we discussed earlier. Okay, so this is my notion system. I'm a bit nerdy, so I wanted to call it the Quantum Mind OS. It just resonates with me and it makes me excited to use it. And I, I went with this cyberpunk background right here. And so the first part of this navigation panel here is the sections okay so we have goals which is kind of like projects from the para method we have the wider areas in life where i'm actually filling some stuff out in the database entries themselves or i'm just linking other things to it and when i go into the area i can see all the linked database fields and so after areas we have data sets and this is my equivalent of resources from the para method but for me i like to call them data sets because for me, data sets are all external knowledge. They can be books, docs, articles, videos, anything external that links to a goal or an area I wanna take, take note of here. And then I have notes, which links to data sets, which are my notes from those data sets. And notes can also just be, you know, notes for myself. And so that's the way I like to think about things. For me, data sets is everything external and notes are my ideas. And those ideas might come from those external data sets. And so notes and data sets are linked and those are linked to the areas and goals. And then I have archive, which again, helps you just declutter your brain and your system. And you can take anything from any of these databases and put it to archives. And so this is the core of my notion system. So let's just go into it real quick. We have goals here which is just a, a simple kanban then we have the areas and we see all these areas here and sometimes i am, am filling them in directly other times i'm just linking resources and notes to these and in data sets we just have a bunch of different things that i'm reading and looking at and this is just from this year and then we have notes here that link to the data sets and these have so far been mostly my ideas because i'm kind of figuring out how i want to you know if i have a note on a data set sometimes i might just want to write it in that database entry or I'll create a note on it. It doesn't really matter as long as I'm capturing the information. And then we have archive where we're using a checkbox in any of these areas. And once I click that checkbox, it automatically gets archived. And so for each of these databases, how the archive works is I have a filter where I'm filtering if the archive property is unchecked. And then when it's checked, it simply gets out of my view for, for each of these uh, categories. And then I'm seeing it in the, in the archive view here. And then I have quick actions, and this is essential for me actually keeping up with the system because I have my desired template for data set, notes, and goals. And so as soon as I come up with 
a note or I have a new goal or I just captured a new data set, I can just quickly click this and this is going to be at the top of my screen if I use Notion on my on my iPhone and so I can quickly capture all that. I then have all my knowledge databases and this is kind of what makes this more of an architect system. So for me, not everything necessarily fits into those categories of, of projects, areas, resources and archive or in my, in my case goals, areas, data sets, notes and archive. For me, sometimes I want to store things that are in a very specific category in their own dedicated database. So for me, I have my content system here where I come up with all my ideas. And then I have a swipe files database where I take note of like ads and copy and LinkedIn posts that, that inspire me. I then have tools and this is kind of where I'm taking note of all the tools that I wanna try and use and, and giving my rating of them. And I have a bunch to enter in there for my old system again but no rush on that. I then have my vocabulary database where I take note of new words that I learned that I find interesting. And then I have my quotes database and this is where I take note of all the quotes that inspire me just so I can look back at them and I don't like to forget, you know, quotes that resonated with me and I'm oftentimes like sitting there like, oh, what was that one quote? Now I don't have that prom anymore. I then have AI prompts here. And this is an important one for me because I have like over 200 prompts. Um, anytime I have a good prompt and I use this software clay.com a lot. And so I have like my own category for them here, but I want to capture all the AI prompts that are useful to me. And so I capture them in this dedicated database and I have like my own little, um, button system here. And then I have clay templates here and this is work related, but basically I use this software called clay.com and I like to store all the templates I use for that here because I'll probably be using clay for the next five, 10 years for all I know. And then I have GTM plays here, and this is also kind of work related, but in the space that I'm in, there's lots of unique angles and ways that B2B companies like to acquire customers. And so I like to take note of all those angles. And, and sometimes this comes to like kind of email campaigns, ad campaigns, it could be many different things. I just like to keep, keep note of those here. That's a secret, so I won't show that one. We also have copywriting frameworks. So for me, I run a lot of cold email campaigns and ad campaigns. So I like to keep all the copywriting frameworks that work and resonate with me there and that I get from other people. And then I have useful links. And this is kind of like random websites that don't belong in the, in the tools database, but like are useful. And I just want to refer back to in the future. And then I have my book list, which stores all the books I want to read. And then I have my buy list, which is kind of where I note all the things that I need to buy or eventually want to buy. And so that's it for the navigation pin and all the main sections. And that's kind of what I'm using most. But then here I have a brain dump panel. And this is kind of where um, I'm just adding random things that comes to mind. For me, all the tasks are managed in Trello, but right now I'm using this brain dump just for all like the productivity improvements that I want to make on my on my digital system. And so I've just got that here. I have my daily reminders and these are quite personal, but I have like my overall life goals that sometimes I just want to remind myself of my daily habits that I always want to do. And for me, I don't like to track these as too much, but I do want to just remind myself of all the things that I, I, I intentionally want to do every day. I then have my morning routine and night routine in case I ever need to remind myself. And then I just have a, a view of all the resources or data sets in my inbox that I want to read. I then have a board view of all my goals. And then I have a little pane here of courses I want to watch. And this is just a random one. I could have put this in a knowledge database, but for me, I just want to complete these courses and then probably remove this, this panel right here. And then I've just got a couple of the other things that I need to finish this notion. Cause again, I built the system this year and I've got like a ton of stuff in Apple notes and my old notion system and computer files that I just want to log into all this. But to be honest, this has been working as I get a new data set or new idea. I write it into those respective databases and it actually gets stored. It actually declutters my brain. And so for once, I feel like I built a system that actually works for me that I'm actually keeping up with and that actually serves the purpose of a digital brain system. And so when I learn something or capture a resource that I wanna revisit later, I just put it here and maybe I do it, maybe I don't, that's not the point. The point is that all the knowledge that's important to me that I'm learning is stored somewhere and I can revisit things if I need to. And all these resources in my inbox, maybe I'll read some of them, in all likelihood I won't read others, but the point is that they're not cluttering my brain. I'm not thinking, oh, I should have read that thing or, or having this disorganized Apple note system. At least I have a place for all this stuff and it lives somewhere and I can kind of use it as I wish. And the last thing to note is once you build a system that really has all the knowledge you care about, that's where Notion AI comes in. And so now you have an AI personal to you with all the knowledge that you care about that's trained on all your resources. 
So when you have a question that you might want to ask AI, but it doesn't have the context of all the stuff that you care about, you can use Notion AI to kind of have an AI companion based on all the stuff that you've logged into your Notion. So for me, I've used that quite a lot this year. So hopefully that's an interesting reason why you might want to use Notion over some of the other good choices that are out there. And so that's it for this video. But if it was useful to you in any way, I would greatly appreciate if you could support the channel by liking the video or subscribing. But if you want to see more stuff like this and let me know in the comments, because actually this channel is mostly going to be about sales systems and growing businesses with AI but I can make more videos like this if people want it and you find it useful. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.